Hello, and thank you for joining us. This is the first in a three-part series on weight loss plateaus in the context of intermittent fasting and appetite correction. We know that a weight loss stall stinks, a weight loss plateau. It's, um, it's demoralizing. Week after week, this may sound familiar. You've come to expect to step on a scale, have that scale read a number that's maybe a pound or two pounds lower than it was the week before, and get that warm, wonderful feeling that it's a ritual worth repeating. Then it happens. One week, you step on the scale, and the number is the same as it was the last week, and the next week, it's the same, and the next week, it's the same, and you hit a weight loss plateau. If that sounds familiar, this is what we like to talk about today, and not to worry, we are hoping that we can share five things that might take the sting out of that plateau a little bit. And the first one is that it can help sometimes to know that you're not alone. Most people who uh, endeavor to, to lose much weight, a, a significant amount of weight over a period of time, eventually hit a weight loss plateau, no matter what regimen they're using. And so it usually is about six months or so. And, uh, and it d doesn't depend on, like I said, what, you know, what uh, way they have used in order to lose the weight. That's the first thing to know is you're not alone. The second thing is you haven't failed, your body hasn't failed, and your dietary lifestyle hasn't failed you. The weight loss plateau is really evidence that your body is doing its job. The scientists have studied obesity, overweight, and overfeeding for decades, trying to sort out how the body works with, with it all and how, what we can do to help lose weight. We've learned a few things. One is that weight loss plateaus are common. No matter what way you, you lose weight, a plateau is common. And the second thing that scientists have learned is that it's very, very difficult to study the way humans eat because we're such complex creatures. We rarely do the same thing twice in any one day, and they can't put us in cages to um, make sure that we only eat what they think we eat. And which, like, which is a good thing. Yes, yeah. that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. So humans are very difficult to study, and that makes getting answers, even from these complex machines we call bodies, getting answers very difficult. And it's also difficult because there's something that scientists call metabolic adaptation. And there's still debate about whether metabolic adaptation happens when a person's gaining weight. There's some evidence that suggests that people actually waste some energy to try to stay at, at a lower weight when they're overfeeding. But some studies have said yes, some studies have, have said no. The bottom line is that it's not enough to keep somebody from gaining weight when they're overeating. But on the way down, uh, it's, it's different. When you're losing weight, you take less energy to move because you're moving a smaller body. You're digesting less food, so that takes less energy. And there is clearly some metabolic adaptation on the, when you're losing weight where, now this may sound like uh, when the body's starting to be more efficient, that may sound like what people call starvation mode, but starvation means that there's damage occurring to the body. And this isn't damage, it's just using up fuel that you have stored. No organ damage is happening. And in, so we might call it conservation mode instead of starvation mm -hmm. mode. The body's trying to hold on. And our bodies are very well adapted to uh, protecting us from losing weight because way on the other side of that weight loss is starvation. There's no real big threat on the other side of weight gain. So we're not protected against weight gain mm -hmm. as, as well as we're protected against weight loss. So when you're losing weight, metabolic adaptation can actually decrease the amount of calories that your body's, body needs by hundreds of calories. A couple hundred calories is a lot. And when you're already eating less because some of the fat is providing fuel for you so you don't have to eat that fuel, and then metabolic adaptation adds to that, it can be really surprising how little you need to eat in order to mm -hmm. survive and even maintain that plateau weight. It's a big deal too, um, that, that there is a metabolic adaptation that the bodies are um, 
that are so well adapted to holding on to fuel that it works really hard to store because that means our smart bodies are equipped to survive in a famine. I mean, if, if tomorrow your food supply got cut off completely, if you have extra fuel and your body has done its job of storing and making sure there's extra fuel, then you would survive for a while until you could get food again. And by a while, that means weeks, not just days. Right. Most, most small animals can typically survive a few days without food. Humans can go for weeks without it. And, and not all bodies are the same. I mean, they're, they are more or less able to survive in a famine or in a, in a time of uh, food scarcity. There, there is a thing called a thrifty metabolism. Some people have a thrifty metabolism, and that means that, or the, the outcome is that they have an easy time gaining weight and a difficult time losing weight. They hold on, on to it very tenaciously. Other bodies have what we call a spendy metabolism. They have a difficult time storing fat, gaining weight, and an easy time losing it. And, you know, that, that may seem like one would envy a person with a spendy metabolism, but think about it. If we were to suddenly have some sort of a zombie apocalypse, those thrifty bodies would do a whole lot better at hunkering down and staying away from being eaten by something else. Or if you're uh, on a deserted island or something, then that, that thrifty metabolism really would come in handy. Right. But you can't choose whether or not you get a spendy or thrifty metabolism. And so that brings us to the, the third thing. If you're uh, intermittent fasting or, and in search of an appetite-correcting lifestyle, that has set you up for success. And the reason that it's setting you up for success is that with most weight loss programs, you lose weight and then you hit the plateau and then you give up. And you go back to eating the way you did before because it wasn't working anymore. So your weight starts to go back up and then you get the yo-yo thing going on. But with the intermittent fasting appetite correction lifestyle, it's a healthy way to live even if you're not losing weight. And we've both been maintaining it for years. Mm -hmm. And so you're in this healthy way of, of life, this healthy lifestyle. And eventually that plateau will end when your body checks in and sees that food supply is, is plenty. There's nothing to worry about. It can let go a little of, of that extra fuel that you still have. And so for people who are doing intermittent fasting as a lifestyle, that pause is just a pause. It's a, the plateau is a temporary thing that you eventually get past. And I guess if you think about it, if, um, if it, it's still a healthier way to live, even if you never get past the plateau. But we're here to help you get past that and uh, get on to, the, to your goal weight. And intermittent fasting is still working, doing its job, doing the job of keeping your body well and healthy during that plateau. I mean, mm -hmm. the body's doing this mysterious thing of checking in, going through its series of... of I guess, calibrations to decide if, they're, if it's safe to lose more weight, if it can afford to, um, to give up that extra fuel. But all the while that's happening, someone who's living an intermittent fasting lifestyle is still having the benefits of the sort of non-scale victories of moving more easily, um, saving money, saving time, those sorts of things. Lowering inflammation, dropping blood pressure, mm -hmm. all, all good things that happen besides the weight loss. And so those are some things that you can shift your focus to. Right. While the scale is being stubborn, there's still some good stuff going on that you can count on from intermittent fasting that will help you maintain it as your lifestyle so that you can eventually break the plateau. And that brings us to the fourth idea that we have for maybe taking some of the sting out of a weight loss plateau. And that is what, what Bert said, shifting your focus. One of the things that you can do during your weight loss plateau, not knowing when it's going to end, and it's different for different people, is you don't stop working on your, on your health and well-being. You keep doing that, but you expand your view of what that means. Health and well-being goes beyond just being uh, losing weight, how, what the scale is doing every week, and instead you, you approach it from the perspective of, I'm going to take care of my healthy whole self. because my weight gain, my weight loss, 
or the status quo of my weight at this moment. It's not the sum total of who I am. It's only one aspect of this wonderful, weird, messy, flawed human body that we all have. And so since you're probably an imperfect human, just like we all are, you may have some other self-improvement thing that could be on your laundry list of things to do while your weight is, well, your weight is staying the same and your body's calibrating and making sure it's safe for you to lose some more. So it's like intermittent fasting has put your weight in the laundry machine and it's running and it's doing its job. So you need to do something well, else. you've got to do something else for a while. And so right. you, you take the time and do something else along with that while that's working uh, so that you can move on. Yeah. And things, I mean, things to think about, possible ideas. One that I thought about was you could work on developing patience, taking, you know, intentional steps to become a more patient person. I'm kind of talking to myself. I'm not a terribly patient person. And so if you're like me, then that would be a self-improvement step to or, or activity or project to take on. And since the weight loss plateau requires a bit of patience, then it has two benefits. One, it helps you with the weight loss plateau to- tolerating that and, and waiting for it to pass. But it also, um, just as a general rule, is a character builder, as they would say. And another one to work on possibly is, is building trust and particularly trusting your body, trusting the process. It's not an easy thing to do, and we know that. But while your, your weight and your body are doing their thing in the laundry machine, I like that, um, then working on other aspects of, of self-improvement for your whole person can, can sometimes um, help to take the sting out of it, let, let you not feel like you're marking time, but you just shifted your focus a bit. And that brings us to the fifth idea that we wanted to share during this video. And that is one of the other things you can do is take an inventory of possible changes in your life that have set the stage for this plateau to happen and things that might, if you address them, potentially shorten the the plateau. There are some things that can put the brakes on weight loss while you're doing an intermittent fasting lifestyle. And so you want to make sure that one of those isn't the the cause and it and in fact, it is just metabolic adaptation that's going to take some time to get by. And so some things that can cause the uh, weight loss to stop are things like stress. If your life has changed and suddenly you have a new stress, that stress tells our bodies that something's wrong. It doesn't know what. It doesn't understand whether it's family stress or financial stress or what that stress is coming from. It just says disaster is going to happen. We better hold on to it as much fuel as we can. So it says no it's more. It's the zombie apocalypse right, coming. Right, zombie apocalypse. Yeah. Yeah, the zombies are coming. We better hold on to as much fuel as we can. And so that puts the brakes on your weight loss. It's programmed into your appetite center. And so the way to, to do that is to identify the stress, reduce the stress, or if you can't reduce it, then manage it using techniques like exercise or meditation or the combination, which is yoga. Um, and then just try to, to, to manage the stress as, as best you can and, and give that some time and see if it uh, helps your weight loss continue. The other thing that can really impair weight loss is a, a problem, problem with your sleep. And so check your sleep. Are you sleeping as much as you used to? Uh, has something <gasps> made you yawny? Uh, are you yawning, yawning, during, <laughs> yawning during the day? Uh, that may imply that there's something wrong with your sleep. And so you may need to make some adjustments. Maybe you change shift and you're on the late shift now. Mm -hmm. And it may take a long time for your body to adjust to that after years of being on a different schedule. So uh, tune in to your your stress and your sleep. And the next thing is to look at your intermittent fasting schedule. Are you keeping a window consistently? Are you eating according to your appetite within your eating window? And are you keeping a window of, of five hours or less? And we maintain a five hour window because that seems to be the most consistent, reliable uh, window for people who um, are d- taking on an intermittent fasting lifestyle in order to get to that point of appetite correction. So another habit to check is, are you, are you counting calories? Your appetite center can do the best calorie counting. Mm-hmm. And so you do not need 
to count calories. So you, you may be uh, kind of hedging away from what your appetite thinks you need by counting calories, but your appetite, to your appetite center, that looks like food scarcity. And so that pr- prompts it to uh, hold on to more fat. What you want to do is feed your appetite center what it thinks you need so it knows that there's plenty of food available. Now, that doesn't mean start cramming in a bunch of stuff. No, it really means listen to your appetite. Just tune into your appetite and try to eat just what you need, not to be full, but to not be hungry. And next thing, check your your, uh, lifestyle. Have you added any tweaks? Are you putting cream in your coffee or milk in your coffee? Are you chewing sugarless gum? Have you changed anything from the basic rule of uh, fast five, which is eat within five consecutive hours, which means you're not eating anything else, no consumption of calories outside of that. And maybe you've taken, started a new supplement or you're taking a new medicine. Either of those can, mm-hmm. can cause changes that result in a plateau. So if you have done any of those things, go back to the basics and, and give that a couple of weeks and see if that helps break your plateau. And I would guess that a good number of plateaus end up being just that. If you really take an inventory, you'll find a culprit somewhere in there. Now, not always. And some of the hardest to to beat are stress and sleep problems. Those are big, big problems. I think stress is one of the most common because it can creep up gradually. And then all of a sudden you realize that you're dealing with quite a bit of family stress. Maybe a family member becomes sick. And it hasn't happened suddenly, but all of a sudden you're taking a lot of time right. taking care of that person, or uh, there's been some job change where you've got a new project, and the even if it's great stress, right, yeah, it can be good stress, but mm-hmm. the stress is going to interfere with uh, weight loss, right? So this is the first in a three part series of ways to break a weight loss plateau. And we're happy to have, have um, presented this material. We'd also like to point, you, point out to you that there are some resources. When you're taking your inventory of life changes, there are two podcasts, the DIET podcast episodes, that uh, take a deep dive into stress and take a deep dive into sleep. So um, m- maybe take the time to listen to those. And that might uh, give you some prompts in uh, things like, how to recognize when you're having a, an issue with stress. Sometimes those really aren't so obvious. So those are available and please uh, look those up. Also, if this has been enjoyable or you'd like to hear when there are, are new videos available, you might consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. We'd love to have you do that. And we look forward to providing more information and hopefully helping you break your weight loss plateau. So I think that wraps it up. And we appreciate your time. Bye-bye. Bye till next time.